As discussed in the previous video, in RAID, different methods are available and in each method there are different options too. Each RAID level makes use of a particular combination of these methods and options within the method depending on the required performance, required redundancy and required capacity. Now let's discuss the RAID levels one by one. RAID 0 RAID 0 makes use of the method of data striping. It stripes the data across two or more disks in the RAID set, that is, the sequential data to be written onto the disk will be split and placed among multiple disks. In other words, the data will be broken into different parts, say for example blocks, and the blocks are written alternately to all the disks in the RAID set. So here block A is written to disk X, block B is written to disk Y, block C goes to disk Z, and block D is again written to disk X, block E to disk Y, block F to disk Z, and block G to disk X and block H to disk Y respectively. We have discussed in the introduction part that data striping helps to achieve parallelism and thereby improve performance. How? While block A is written to disk X, we can parallelly write block B to disk Y and block C to disk Z. Similarly, blocks D, E and F can be written to X, Y and Z in parallel fashion. Also, block G and H can also be written in concurrent fashion. Thus, write operation can be executed in a faster way, hence improved write performance. Similarly, while reading block A from disk X, we can parallelly read block B from disk Y and block C from disk Z. Also, blocks D, E and F can be read simultaneously. G and H can also be read in parallel fashion. Hence, improved read performance too. But since RAID 0 makes use of just this method of data striping, it focuses only on incre increased I.O. performance. There is no redundancy or fault tolerance. It does nothing to ensure that the data will be safe. Not only that, since the data is striped across all the disks, every disk is holding a part of the data and hence if any one disk fails then it results in the total data loss. And what is the available or the usable disk capacity in the RAID 0 array? It is the sum of the capacities of all the disks in the set. Here if each disk is of 1 terabyte size then there is a usable disk capacity of 3 terabytes and the usable or the available disk capacity is 100 percent. And since we stripe the data across two or more disks, the minimum number of disks required for RAID 0 setup is 2. RAID 1 RAID 1 makes use of the method of mirroring. In mirroring, every data is written to two drives at the same time, thus producing a mirrored set of drives. Every disk drive will be having a mirror disk or a shadow disk for itself. As we discussed in the introduction part, mirroring is a method which mainly provides redundancy and thereby reliability. How? Even if one disk fails, our data is safe. We can access the data from the mirror disk and after replacing the failed disk, the data can be rebuilt or recovered from the mirror disk which contains the exact copy. Only if both these corresponding disk fails, our data is lost. And even though the focus is on reliability, there is an added advantage of performance too. How? Since every disk is duplicated, 
The data is available on both drives, so we can read data from either of the disks. Hence, while reading block A from this disk, we can parallelly read block B from its mirror disk. And while reading block C from this disk, we can parallelly read block D from the mirror disk and so on. Thus, the read operation can be executed in a faster way. Hence, improved read performance is achieved. And what is the available or the usable disk capacity? It is only 50% since every disk is duplicated. So here if each disk is of size 1 terabyte, out of the 4 terabyte size only 2 terabytes will be the usable disk capacity. Remaining 2 terabytes will contain the redundant information. And since every disk is duplicated, the minimum number of disks required for RAID 1 setup is 2.